What is betrayal trauma and why is it important adult survivors of family scapegoating abuse know about this particular type of trauma? That's what I'll be talking about in today's episode of Beyond Family Scapegoating Abuse, so stick around. Welcome to my channel. I'm Rebecca Mandeville, family systems expert and author of Rejected, Shamed, and Blamed, Help and Hope for Adults in the Family Scapegoat Role. I had uh, done a clinical series that's also appropriate for adult survivors of family scapegoating abuse to uh, watch on um, the clinical aspects of family scapegoating abuse, what was revealed in my research on what I eventually named family scapegoating abuse or FSA. And um, that, that video series, I often referenced complex trauma and that structural dissociation uh, occurs in response to trauma, in response to family scapegoating behaviors that a child or adult child experiences. Many of you are already aware that there's different types of trauma responses that are actually survival responses for a child or adult child in a dysfunctional or narcissistic family system. And those include the freeze response, the fawn or submit or the quick, be quick to appease and people please, um, the flight response, the fight response. And there's a fifth one, actually, that Dr. Janina Fisher talks about uh, in the workbook I use with my clients, and that is the cry for help response, which I'll address in a future video. Betrayal trauma is something that Dr. Jennifer Freyd, who some of you know through the acronym she created, DARVO, deny, attack, reverse, victim, and offender, which is something that often happens to scapegoated children and adults. She uh, created the term through her research called betrayal trauma. And she has a betrayal trauma theory that she has published and um, spoken on. And that was important for me to put in my book. And I do have a chapter called Scapegoating as Family Betrayal. And I include betrayal trauma theory in my book. So you can check that out if you do get my book um, or look back into it if you already have my book. Or you can go online and search on betrayal trauma theory. Dr. Jennifer Freyd, F-R-E-Y-D. She introduced it in 1994. You'll find some papers that you can read. Uh, last I checked for free there online. And um, you can search under Betrayal Trauma Theory or BTT. And it's important to recognize that the rejecting, shaming, and blaming behaviors associated with family scapegoating abuse is a form of betrayal. It can be an individual betrayal by one family member who's driving the scapegoating, or it can feel like a family betrayal, the, the entire family you may feel uh, is, is joined together in this uh, alliance of we're okay and you're not um, the scapegoated child or in family systems, we say the identified patient in certain circumstances is the one that is having deposited onto them this projection that happens in human groups uh, when groups are not open healthy systems there'll be an unconscious projection of the shadow the disowned parts the things about ourselves we cannot acknowledge or tolerate that that provoke too much anxiety and fear this can get projected out onto a particular family member in a dysfunctional family system that has intergenerational trauma, particularly. Uh, my research revealed that those families are particularly vulnerable or in a narcissistic family system. Often the scapegoating is very conscious, very intentional. Um, the narcissistic family power holder uh, is setting up a particular child to be scapegoated. And I do like to stress that in those cases, it really can be conscious and malicious and intentional. 
but not always. Sometimes the narcissistic parent is highly traumatized and, and there still could be a projection process going on. But regardless of the underlying processes for the person in the scapegoat or identified patient role, you're going to be feeling abandoned, betrayed uh, by family. You may not be conscious of that. You may therefore over accommodate to try to, to uh, appease, to people please, to not have boundaries. Uh, you might tolerate abusive behaviors because people, especially when they're young and dependent on their survival, uh, on being accepted by their family or by a parent that's providing food and shelter to them, it's, a, it's just overwhelming, too overwhelming to consciously uh, perceive that the tribe, so to speak, your family of origin is not embracing you, in fact, are actively rejecting you and may actually expel you, eject you from that system when you're an adult or make things so unbearable you have to eject yourself eject yourself out, out of the plane but indeed betrayal trauma uh, can happen as a precursor to dissociation and this was part of dr freight's research the dissociation occurs as a means of preserving the relationship with the primary caregiver and important family figures if you're a child and you're feeling rejected, shamed, blamed, you need these people uh, for your very survival, many things are going to be pushed to the back of the psyche into the unconscious. And we can then dissociate, uh, which I talked about in my clinical series where I talked about specifically structural dissociation. And that is a survival mechanism dissociation is a means of splitting off traumatic experiences so the psyche can tolerate and, and, and exist within this reality that might be overwhelmingly painful, too much for a child's psyche to handle. And that is how dissociation can start. So in Dr. Freyd's work, she specifically, specifically looked at in her betrayal trauma theory, how betrayal acts as a precursor to dissociation. Any form of child abuse inherently includes betrayal trauma because those that the child most depended on to care for them, to love them, broke their trust the the silent contract of um, I'm your parent, you're my child, I'm going to protect you, I'm going to nurture you, I'm going to be there for you, I'm going to embrace you, accept you unconditionally, and support you as you grow and help you to become a developed healthy self. That unspoken contract is broken and sometimes that can happen very early on. Uh, as I've talked about. So we can't underestimate what any type of child abuse, including invisible abuse, psycho-emotional abuse, including what I called family scapegoating abuse. We just can't, uh, we can't overestimate the negative impact this can have on a child's psyche, on their sense of self. And yet this is a form of abuse that until very recently is, is rarely talked about and has not been properly or adequately recognized. In my research on FSA, I, I felt it was clinically appropriate to consider betrayal trauma as contributing to the manifestation of complex trauma symptoms. Given that betrayal trauma develops in response to relational trauma uh, and chronic environmental stressors, and I'm going to be doing a separate video on attachment trauma and family scapegoating abuse. So I hope you subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss these videos that are always for adult survivors of FSA. Some are more clinically focused. So if you are a clinician, a therapist, or know clinicians and therapists or trauma-informed coaches who might benefit from watching my clinical series here on YouTube, you might want to give them a link 
to my channel, which I'd appreciate, and hopefully they will too. The other key thing to understand about betrayal trauma is when the family environment feels unsafe and threatening, when your own parent may feel unsafe, threatening, you do not feel protected, even if you're not consciously thinking that, but there's a fundamental underlying sense of, of you're not protected by the tribe, by the heads of the tribe, so to speak. Uh, it could even feel hostile, like a hostile environment for that child or adult child. And there's no means of escape, escaping the system when you're young. Uh, and some people as adults have disabilities, illnesses, where they're dependent on family still, even as an adult. You can be very vulnerable to um, developing signs and symptoms of complex trauma. And it will intensify when you reach adulthood. And that's why I stressed and will continue to stress to anyone who thinks they are the scapegoat in their family system, please find someone who will assess you for complex trauma and someone who knows how to appropriately treat complex trauma. It may not here in the United States yet be in our diagnostic statistical manual, but the World Health Organization, the WHO, now does recognize complex trauma. Veterans Administration here in the United States now recognizes complex trauma it's recognized in the UK and, and elsewhere. And don't stop. If you think you have complex trauma symptoms, you're suffering from betrayal trauma with your family, don't stop until you get appropriate treatment. It's so important that you understand you may be suffering from complex trauma, betrayal trauma, attachment trauma, and that this is contributing uh, it, it, to an overwhelming sense of toxic shame. Toxic shame can be debilitating. It can be crippling. And again, most survivors don't know they're suffering from it. Toxic shame is held unconsciously. It's different than ordinary shame. I like to say toxic shame is not that you're experiencing shame. You are shame. You are shame walking around on two legs. And you don't even know that you are being uh inundated and flooded with toxic shame you may identify with oh you know i, I felt feel feel humiliated when i speak in front of people or uh, i have imposter syndrome i feel i know people see me as successful but i don't believe it i may never believe it all these things have their roots in toxic shame toxic shame can have its roots in abuse and in complex trauma trail trauma attachment trauma, and um, these may have begun very early in your life. For those who are adult survivors of family scapegoating abuse, or you're just learning about it, and you think that you might be, uh, have been in that family scapegoat role or identified patient role, it may be that you, you rejected this um, idea the family had about you. And you may have had that fight response and you may have protested and openly challenged how you were being seen in this very distorted, twisted way. Um, if that's the case, you also may be experiencing profound relational distress, complex trauma, and betrayal trauma symptoms, and you might not know it because of that fight response. And if you were or are someone with a strong fight response, you may be exhausted at this point from challenging the family, the false family narrative about you, from cha challenging what I call the scapegoat narrative. If you're someone who identifies as being a fighter, you still want to be aware of how vulnerable you might be and what price you paid to be the child or adult child in the family system who was fighting these false narratives. And you'll want to make sure that you are looking at issues like complex trauma symptoms, betrayal trauma, attachment trauma. Uh, if you are now an adult and know that something something's not right in your family or something's 
blocking your sense of well-being and feeling a robust sense of uh, mental and emotional health, no matter what kind of trauma response you had by the time you are an adult, if you are an adult survivor of FSA and you're just starting to realize that or just now realizing really what uh, symptoms you might be suffering from, it's very common and it was confirmed in my research. It might be hard for you to form stable relationships in part due to betrayal trauma. Um, your trust has been betrayed by the people who were supposed to love and care for you the most, your family of origin. So what you might tolerate in a, um, in a adult relationship, in a friendship, in a love relationship, you may tolerate things that no healthy person who really cares about themselves and respects themselves would tolerate. You might repeatedly forgive people who betray your trust instead of seeing it's a real danger side, a sign, possibly deal breaker, and it might be best if you walked away. Uh, the um, You may avoid relationships altogether because you know you were betrayed by your family and you just can't go through any more betrayals. You may isolate. You may not even pursue romantic relationships. You may um, be very tentative about forming even um, friendships because of that sense of having been betrayed. And of course, as most of you already know, you, you can repeat your childhood. We go to what we know. You may find yourself you're in an abusive relationship. You may be uh, feeling uh, that you are not able to trust the person you're with or safely attached to them that you may even stay in situations that pose threat to you, in a, uh, not only personally, but physically, because the stage was set in your childhood for you to land into those kinds of situations and repeat, unconsciously repeat the family abuse that was demonstrated towards you. Indeed, the consequences of being scapegoated by your family can be severe, especially if it started at a very young age. The good news is there is hope because recovery is possible. Recovery from complex trauma is possible. Recovery from betrayal trauma and attachment trauma is possible. It does require trauma-informed care. Uh, the good news is we know that the brain can develop new healthy neural pathways, connections, and the unhealthy pathways can shrink. And um, that should be good news to people that we have brain research now that supports how that we can even heal the brain when we have experienced abuse. And of course, there is healing that must happen for the psyche, the emotions, the heart, the mind. Some people have physical illnesses, somatic symptoms that they feel deeply and strongly can be directly associated to what happened to them in their childhood or the family betrayal and rejection they experienced. Um, and it's a lot to have to face, but you're not alone. And there are people to support you here in our community. Uh, check out the comments. There are some very caring people here. I know there's other therapists and clinicians who talk about this, who also have communities. And um, I have some resources on my website and in my book, as I mentioned earlier, such as Out of the Fog, they have a complex trauma support forum. And... I'm putting together a training program for therapists and trauma-informed coaches for how to help people who have been scapegoated by their family. We're looking at starting a, a more formal community for scapegoated adults. And if you'd like to hear more about that, you might want to subscribe to my newsletter through my website, scapegoatrecovery.com, where I inform people of my latest offerings. And if you want to be notified of these videos, please subscribe, tap the notification bell, and it will ask you if you want to be emailed when I release a video. We have people sharing 
creative expression on the community page here now on my channel, um, some poems. You're free to do that. If you want to do it anonymously, let me know. I'll republish them, leave your name off. And I'm excited uh, about the community we're forming here. And that's why I want to see if I can have a more um, private place where we can get together and meet and help each other on this walk of recovery that we are doing from our experiences with family scapegoating abuse. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, let other people know about my channel and these videos, and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.